If you are a bio student revising for a big exam, I bet you're going to be making at least one of these mistakes that I'm going to cover in this video. At the point in time I'm making this, I just went to ask my students how their prelim revision is coming along and I noticed that there are a few mistakes that kept on coming up again and again. And so here are 8 deadly revision mistakes that will cost you your grades. Number 1. Starting off with the first topic. Tell me if this is you. When an exam period is approaching, you start with the first topic and then you go down the list in chronological order. So the first few topics get revised first and then the last few topics is at the end. But most of the time what happens is that we run out of time and we neglect the last few topics. We just rush through them. So if you do this again and again, what happens is that over the different exams, you're going to be always revising the first few topics multiple times and giving them a lot of priority. Whereas the last few topics always get neglected. Unfortunately, the first few topics are usually the easiest ones which need the least attention. Whereas the last few are the hardest and they need the most time. So a good tip is to start with your worst topics, not the first topic. When you're planning a revision, list out all the topics and then rearrange them based on how bad they are. You can put them in categories like super bad, not very familiar, and okay or even good. After arranging into those broad categories, then within those categories, you can further rank them. Revise the topics which are worse first and then end with the best. Mistake number two is memorizing all content properly first before attempting questions. Tell me true or false. When we are revising, we should start by making sure all our content is perfect first and then we start attempting questions. Now, if you said false, good, but most students unfortunately fall into the trap of thinking that's what they should do. And so they spend so much time memorizing or making notes so that their content is perfect before they even attempt a single practice question. This is very idealistic but in my experience as well as experience of other students, it is just not realistic. You have so many subjects and so little time to do all that prim and proper before the exam comes. So instead what you should do is this. If your content for that topic is around 7 out of 10 or better, you don't even need to revise content first. Just go straight into practicing questions. And when you do that, you will run into problems and that's okay. Just make those mistakes, find out why you got them wrong, do your corrections and go back to the notes to refer and revise that concept which you got wrong. You see when you're doing this you are actually fixing your content gaps and problems while practicing questions and then you just move on to the next question and repeat the process. You're killing two birds with one stone it is so much more efficient and you will actually have enough time to practice questions for all topics and that is more important than just trying to memorize everything perfectly. So always prioritize practicing questions over getting your content perfectly memorized. Mistake number three is taking way too long to make notes. Is it just me or when you make notes do you want to always make it look very perfect? You want it to be neat, proper, and aesthetic. And if you're anything like me, you will then waste a lot of time, many hours on each topic just so that it can be up to your own standard. But if you're revising for a major exam, you can't afford to do this. After all, notes are just a tool. Just like how a hammer is a tool used to build a house, notes are a tool so that you can score the good grades. Now, wouldn't it be absurd if you spend so much time decorating your hammer and making it look like the best hammer in the world, but you never spend time actually building your house? So that's what you guys are doing when you spend all this time making perfect, beautiful notes, but very little time practicing the questions and actually getting better at scoring in the exam. So stop wasting time making the most beautiful notes. You don't need that. And in fact, if you don't have enough time to make notes for all topics before the exam comes, that's okay. Just prioritize staying on track with the practicing of the questions and allow yourself to be slow on the making of notes. Because even if you lag behind on that one, it wouldn't be half as bad as failing to do enough practice questions before the exam. Mistake number four is prioritizing homework over your revision. I'm going to say something very controversial and I think a lot of teachers will hate me for this. But when there's a major exam coming up, I think you should not care about homework. You should always prioritize getting a revision done before you do the homework. I did this for JC as well. When I was revising for math prelims, there was so much homework given by the school. And teachers have good intentions when they do that. They are trying to make sure that you do enough practice questions so that you are more prepared for the exam. But for students who already have planned their own revision, and in my case, I was going for tuition where each lesson was revising some topics with us. So I know that if I just did the homework from the tuition and I do my own revision, I will be very well prepared for the upcoming exam. I also knew that if I did the homework given by the school, I would not have enough time to do both. And so I chose to sacrifice the homework for my revision. And good news, things actually turned out pretty well. The point of homework is to help you get better grades. If you were to sacrifice your exam for homework because you gave up on revising just so you can submit homework, it defeats the very purpose of homework. So if I were you, I would just do the most urgent homework so I can still submit it on time. But in terms of my priority, it's like very low compared to doing my actual revision. Mistake number five is reading notes passively. Is this you when reading notes? You take out the notes, you start reading, and then after 30 seconds, you're daydreaming. You're not there anymore because it's so boring. So if you're doing that, it's probably because you're reading notes passively, not actively. So instead, you should read notes actively by doing these two things. As you are reading the notes, have some paper and a pen and write down, number one, all the unfamiliar points. So this is telling yourself that in these areas of content, you are not good at. And you are actually starting to create what I call a suck list, where these are the 
things you are not good at so that one or two days before the exam, you can read through this suck list and make sure you have covered all your weaknesses. The second thing to do when reading your notes is to write down all your doubts. After you're done reading, then you can ask a teacher, you can ask your friends, ask Google for these questions and get your doubts cleared as soon as possible. If you're doing these two things while reading your notes, you will never find it boring and this is so much more effective than just reading it passively. Mistake number six is allowing time wasters into your life. Picture this, a big exam is coming up and you have a lot of work to do, so many things to revise, but yet every day you are wasting so many hours on things like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube or Netflix and they are just sucking so much time out of your life. So what is the solution? Maybe the solution for you is going completely cold turkey on those specific time wasters. So if you know you have a weakness for Netflix and it tends to suck you in and then you go binging for hours, then it's time to go cold turkey on those. Research has shown that people who are trying to diet and lose weight, for those who say that I'm strictly cutting out everything which is unhealthy and they go cold turkey, they actually have better results than those people who compromise and say, oh, I have one cheat day. Because when you have a cheat day, then you're not sure on exactly where your boundary is. And when someone offers you a chocolate bar, then you're like, hmm, okay, maybe I'll just have one. It's kind of like a cheat bar. But then compared to those people who stay completely cold turkey, they do not stick to their diet as well. And therefore their results are not as good. So if you kind of bargain with yourself and allow some compromise and your boundaries are not clear cut, you will likely just fall back into all that time wasting binging. Find out what your weaknesses are and then just go completely cold turkey, at least for this period when you are revising for a major exam. Mistake number seven is having zero entertainment or fun. True or false, when you're at a revision period, you should cut out all gaming, all fun and all entertainment. That is the best for results. Actually false, because if you do that, you will start feeling very bored, no motivation and very burnt out. And when you're trying to force yourself to study, you will just keep on daydreaming because of how bored you are. So while it is true that you probably should go cold turkey on your weaknesses, for example, you are very prone to binging on Netflix, then during this period, yes, you should cut out Netflix completely. But that does not mean you should have no fun at all during this study period. You can still do things that you like, which give you lots of joy and excitement, as long as they are not infringing on those cold turkey boundaries that you set for yourself. You can still schedule time for things like cycling, reading, playing instruments, going for movies, hanging out with friends. All these things should still be in your life and you should schedule time for them. Just don't let them go out of control and overrun your studying time. Mistake number eight is not making a revision plan. So if you have a big exam coming up and you still haven't made a revision plan, don't worry, I'm here to help you out. Step one, list out all the topics for that subject. Step two, spread it out throughout all the weeks up till the exam. Step three, under each topic, you must do a bunch of practice questions. This can come from assessment books, topical TYS, etc. Step four, here's where you add all the other optional things like reading your notes to make your content better or maybe practicing doing flashcards to revise your content further. But the most crucial thing is that you must get in some practice questions for all the topics. And that's pretty much it. So now you turn it into a kind of to-do list and you take off each topic once you have cleared it. On top of this, I also recommend that every week do one full paper to practice for that major exam that's coming up. I actually made a more detailed video on how to actually start revising for a major exam. It's for how to start revising for prelims. So go watch that video up here if you need to. So tell me below how many mistakes mistakes you caught yourself making. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate when you guys do that. If you have any questions, please leave your question down below in the comments. And there is a very high chance I'll make an entire video just answering your question because I think it will help many other students as well.